These are my five lessons learned from last season. These are the five, five lessons I've learned. Number one, uh, know your equipment and know your range. Uh, I had a late season bull tag in Arizona. Uh, spent the better part of an entire day putting stock on a nice six by seven bull. He was bedded out on the end of a little finger ridge and I snuck into about 80 yards, waited him out the entire afternoon in the sun. Uh, that bull did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He turned and fed back up the ridge in the evening right towards me. I had the entire day baking out in the sun to think about that shot. Uh, I had taken the range and he ended up being right where I wanted him to be. The one thing that I had not taken into consideration is the angle compensation. So I use a Leica Range Master Range Finder. It does give you the calculated angle uh, compensation. Um, it's just delayed, maybe about a half a second. And I've used that range finder a hundred times to take different animals, no issues whatsoever. But for whatever reason that day, I took the range as I took it initially. I did not, for whatever reason, think about the angle compensation. Uh, Drew anchored my bow and shot one of probably the most perfect arrows I've ever shot uh, and actually just watched that sail right over his back. Um, I can tell you that I will never do that again. Uh, they also make special range finders, which will be going soon into my cart from the Go Hunt gear shop. <laughs> Number two, be ready always. Uh, piggybacking on another mistake I made in Colorado this last year. Spent the better part of a day working a large herd of elk. Bulls are bugling. Uh, last bull I'd seen in this little cut was a spike. He came in to investigate. I wasn't really interested in killing a spike. He uh, turned and fed into this patch of timber and we kind of limped along behind him. Uh, we watched the rest of the herd feed up and over a ridge and we could hear, hear a bull bugling in the timber, which I naturally assumed was the spike. Sat on that bull for a while, called back and forth. He'd squill, I'd cow call, and just for the sheer sake of film, I thought, eh, we'll call this bike back in. Um, cow called a few more times. Uh, my bow is sitting eight feet from me. I'm sitting there on the ground just in time for my cameraman to look over and say, no, that's a nice six by six at 60 yards. So be ready always. Uh, don't make a rookie mistake of uh, leaving your bow, not in your hands, not ready to take a shot. Play the situation for what it is, you know? Don't always assume that uh, what you think has happened has happened. You know, be ready every single moment. Number three, pick the right weapon for the right hunt and the right person. Um, Last year, I took my 16-year-old uh, on a hunt in Colorado. It was the first rifle hunt, uh, probably the first mistake that I made. I did not take into consideration the type of vegetation that we might end up hunting. Uh, when we got back into that area, most of that country was beetle kill. Uh, tons of feed, tons of water in that beetle kill. A bunch of standing dead. All those elk were completely socked in to that beetle kill and they weren't coming out. Uh, they were super vocal. Um, it was a fun hunt. Elk were screaming. We were working in on them. Uh, the issue we had is I thought that my kid needed a bigger rifle to kill a bull elk, which is typically, you know, a good, a good recommendation. I would say sometimes you need a larger caliber to kill a bull elk. Um, the thing I didn't anticipate was that most of that hunt, most of our shot opportunities and interactions with those bulls was like 80 to hundred yards. And it was quick accusation of a target, which my kid was not ready. I hadn't prepared him for that. You know, I was thinking that we would go on more of a traditional rifle hunt where you would have a two, three, 400 yard shot on a bull. Um, this worked out uh, to where the skill that he needed was to be able to quickly acquire a target in his scope and to make a shot. And if I had that hunt to do over again, I would have picked a smaller caliber rifle, one that was lighter weight that he could very uh, easily and quickly manipulate, uh, acquire a target. Uh, I'd have probably put maybe a 4 by 16 power scope on that and turn that thing way down and just let him, um, you know, acquire that target super quick. He ended up missing a couple bulls and uh, to no fault of his own. I mean, it was just a tough situation for a kid. Um, but would have made the difference had I picked the right weapon and the right equipment for the type of vegetation and terrain that we were hunting in. My fourth lesson learned is kind of a funny one. And uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm, I'm ready to talk about this on camera, but why not, right? Uh, I was putting up an antelope blind 
on an antelope hunt in Wyoming. And I climbed inside that blind and all those pop-up blinds have a hub and essentially what you do is it's spring-loaded. You pull those out and uh, they pop out and that's what retains the shape of the blind and then you kind of guide those out with a guideline. Uh, I was on the inside of one of those blinds and uh, I went to pull the hub which is kind of twisted up from the whole process of you know setting the thing up and one of the spring-loaded uh, carbon fiber rods uh, popped out and caught me right in the cherries and I instantly stood up and I knew I was in a lot of pain uh, but I straight away passed out. You were only out for like five seconds and then when you woke up you were like really freak your eyes went really wide and yeah but I learned some lessons in there and I guess probably one of the lessons that you know pops to my mind uh, is that I probably don't have just enough basic first aid skills I maybe have the skills, I just haven't had the reminders that I need to. I think it's a really good idea for me before I go into that 2021 season where I'm gonna see some pretty rough, gnarly country. You know, any kind of situation can happen when you're out there. Uh, I carry a medical kit, but it's pretty rudimentary. I probably need to retouch uh, that medical kit list as well as just like some basic practices like CPR and that kind of thing. <laughs> Number five, lesson learned from my 2020 season that I will be rolling into my 2021 season is just simply be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> you guys know that cheer? Uh, there were definitely situations I had this year where I, instead of being aggressive and moving in uh, when I should have, I held back. And I can definitely think of at least two situations on an elk hunt where we had bulls absolutely rolling. They were bugling, they were talking, we were right in the mix of them. And instead of making the judgment call to move down the hill and run at them, or um, you know, drop into the bottom and go after that bull when I had plenty of daylight left, I didn't. I held up. I sat there on the ridge, I played it safe a couple times. And that, uh, that judgment call, it comes with some experience and sometimes it is good to hold up and wait, but there's definitely more times where I wished I'd have been uh, aggressive. So one of the lessons that I learned is to be aggressive. So, you know, when in doubt, if, you know, if I think I should hesitate, maybe think again and, and just be aggressive, you know, go, go after it. These are the five.